We made a malaria vaccine with an entirely new approach. We gave the patients living malaria parasites at the same time as an anti-malaria medicine and thereby made a vaccine that was so successful that we saw 100% protection after infecting the patients with the same parasite. 100 years ago, catching an infectious disease was essentially a death sentence. But after years of innovation, many are now easily treatable. But that also depends on where you live in the world. Millions of people in low-income countries die from preventable diseases every year. Nearly half the world's population is still at risk from malaria, and Ebola is back in Africa. The DRC is facing its worst outbreak of the disease. At a summit in Qatar, 2,000 healthcare experts have come together to try to create a healthier world. The executive chair of the World Innovation Summit for Health joins us now from Doha. He is Lord Darcy of Denham, also a former health minister in the United Kingdom. Lord Darcy, welcome to the Newsmakers. You know, malaria and also Ebola, two very good examples of diseases which really show the difference between healthcare in the north and the south of the globe. Hardly anybody in the north dies from these two diseases. What needs to be done to bridge that gap between healthcare in the north and healthcare in the south, do you think? I agree there are big gaps between the north and the south, but I think it's also important to realise that some of the prevalence of some of the diseases in the south are high because... The context is very different. Malaria being a good example, that's a transmission through a mosquito as a vector where there isn't much mosquitoes in the north for temperature and climate issues. One of the areas we're discussing at WISH this time is climate change. And I think that is one of the big threats because you can very easily, with the warming environment in the north, have similar problems when it comes to malaria and and uh, the vector being the mosquitoes. So, uh, so when it comes to the burden of disease in the south, uh, malaria is a huge burden, but we've seen some wonderful innovations in that field, as your film suggested, in terms of vaccines. The Gates Foundation have been extremely active in the eradication of malaria, if that's at all possible. But, you know, history in the last century is littered with examples of infectious disease that we've got on top of. Polio is a good example. Uh, we need to do more in completely eradicating polio from the face of the earth, as we did with smallpox. So there are examples of success. We need to learn from them. And the World Innovation Summit for Health is all about sharing these success stories uh, and innovations that will look at improving the life expectancy, but also the quality of life in years to come, whether that happens to be in the north or the south. Yeah, tell us about some of those innovations that uh, you're going to be hearing about over those two days of that summit in Doha, those innovations that are going to improve the quality of our lives and extend our lives even. Absolutely. So we looked at one of the forums that I just left earlier is in areas of... Uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data sciences. We feel that is one of the most, uh, and digital obviously, and we feel that is probably one of the most uh, powerful transformational tools in health and healthcare delivery in terms of empowerment of the patients. You know, most of us now carry one of these, so-called a smartphone, which has a computing power that beats any big computer we had 10 years ago, and the ability to uh, measure your own physiological parameters in terms of your blood pressure, your pulse, your physical activity, the number of steps you've done, all of these will empower you as an individual to focus on your physical health. And, uh, and as you know, prevention is better than cure. Uh, in terms of uh, hospital and healthcare delivery, the opportunity of automation the opportunity of uh, uh, machine learning, as we've looked at one example in mammography, which is breast screening x-rays, in which the machine could detect early signs of breast cancer through a mammography uh, much quicker, much more accurately, is the type of technological revolutions we're going to be seeing in the future. And that is going to have a huge impact in detecting earlier disease, understanding the risk at a population level, intervening at an earlier stage. 
Uh, and as you know, in any disease, if you intervene earlier, the outcomes are going to be much, much better. Johns Hopkins University, just picking up on this point you've made about machine learning, data analytics, AI. Johns Hopkins University has found in the United States the third biggest killer of patients is medical error. So would you definitely expect machines to improve on that percentage? Absolutely. I mean, well, the one thing about uh, medical error, uh, error is human. Now, if you take the human aspect out of that in terms of automation, and alert systems, and we've seen that example certainly where I work uh, of, a, of, a, of an algorithm that now detects or at least alerts me that a patient is going off in renal failure, tested in one of our big teaching hospitals in London, uh, and it has prevented the progression into kidney failure uh, in a hospital setting by about 80%. These are the types of uh, these are the types of innovations that we will be seeing in the future, rather than a doctor getting an alert in the morning to say, by the way, you have a patient who's unwell. In actual fact, the machine will be sending the alert that this patient is deteriorating into kidney failure. So what they're saying to you is absolutely right in Hopkins, and we're going to see the translation of that in improving patient safety. Patient safety is very close to my own uh, research and my own heart, really, in many ways, because we know the prevalence of safety or errors is about one in 10 in every patient coming into hospital. And technology will help us in reducing that to negligible. No patient wants to come in to get something done to them and leave with an error which led them to have another complication. Lord Darcy, we very much appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us on the Newsmakers.